Hey guys, welcome to Brian's Man Cave. So today I'm playing another unbelievably rare game for the Atari 2600. Um, yeah, I started doing this, for, you know, I've done a couple of videos where I, I kind of find these really rare games um, and, and really just look at, at the game itself. Because we all know, most of the time these games are not rare because they're great games. And so it's interesting to just be able to take a look at the game and just see what the game is like, even though we all know it's not about the actual game itself. It's about just the obscurity or rarity of the cartridge. Anyways, this game is called Cakewalk. Uh, it's by a company I, I don't, I'm not really familiar with, but they have made quite a few things uh, called Comavid. Uh, so they, they made a couple of things, uh, a couple of games and, and you know some programming cards and stuff like that. Um, and I've, I've read that they were a little bit more common overseas than they were in North America. So, like, in North America, this game, Cakewalk, is kind of, like, really, really, like, on the rare, rare scale. Uh, Atari Age gives it 9, uh, a 9 rating on the rarity scale, and they have a rarity scale that goes up to 10. Uh, so it's pretty rare. <laughs> and I don't know what the value is. I hadn't actually spent a lot of time looking it up. I'm sure it's all over the place. There's probably not a lot of them to really compare. Anyways... This game is interesting. It, it's kind of like uh, a familiar game that we all know, and that's Tapper, uh, which was an arcade game, an arcade classic. And it also kind of reminds me of games like Pressure Cooker from Activision. And, you know, well, I guess because it's also about a chef, maybe even Burger Time. But the game is nothing like Burger Time. It's more like Tapper. Anyways, let's get into trying this game out. I, I know I'm not going to do well because I tried it already. And it's not easy. Anyways, this is Cakewalk for the Atari 2600. Okay, so there we go. Uh, well, a, a nice opening screen, I have to admit. I mean, you got that, that chef guy there. Uh, nice little drawing of a chef. Uh, it says Cakewalk. I, I, don't, I don't know. I think that's like their little logo symbol. It looks like a 9, but I don't think that's a 9. I think that's actually like their logo. So let's get started. Um, I believe we have to be in difficulty B for this thing to not be crazy. So I'm going to put it on difficulty B. And then you hit the start. So there's your little chef guy. So what you're doing, essentially, is you have to get the cake off the conveyor belt. And that's the janitor down there. He goes and cleans up your mess, and then he runs away. So you have four uh, chances of making a mess before the janitor gives up and you lose the game uh, is what they really say and you can see how tricky this game is um, all those conveyor belts you have to run and, and grab the cake that's gonna run off the conveyor belt first deliver it and if you miss that's what happens it falls and it's done uh, I couldn't believe how hard this was when I first tried it. I, I, I was like, seriously? Maybe it's just me, maybe it's my reaction speed, or maybe I'm just not good at these tile type of games, but... I mean, holy jeez. Um, Tapper's not like this at all. Like, Tapper's similar. But I don't remember Tapper being this hard. So I'm gonna try. I mean, like, look, those are both at the same... Okay, now there is one thing I am missing. You can stop the conveyor belt. You can only stop one at a time. So I'm going to try that. I'm going to try that on my on my next turn. So what we do is... Okay, so I'm just going to grab that one. So as you see, I hit the button and the conveyor belt turned pink. And it stopped it. But you have to judge if that cake, you're not going to be able to make it. Get down to that conveyor belt and stop it on time whoop, <laughs> before that happens. Okay, so obviously I'm going to get this one before that bottom one. So I'm going to be quick here. So say I stop that one. No, I'm going to stop that one. Because those cakes were coming at the same time. Now it only stops for about four seconds before you have to rush back up and make sure you get that, either stop it again or grab that cake. Um, and I, and I mentioned Pressure Cooker from Activision mainly because it's a similar concept where you're a chef and you're grabbing items. Um, but 
I found that pressure cooker was a lot hard, easier, I should say, than this one. Um, this one is definitely more challenging. I'm gonna stop that. And I think that's the key, learning how to stop the conveyor belt and when to stop the conveyor belt. Now supposedly there's a gingerbread man and some knife and fork and a coffee break. This is the coffee break. So that just means I went to the kind of the next stage where as if it wasn't hard enough things will, will slowly get harder. <laughs> I didn't think I was going to make that. Okay, I'm going to stop that one. I'm going to go for this one. Now you can only stop one conveyor belt. So if you go and try and stop it again, uh, stop another one, the one you previously stopped, oops, that was a mistake. The one you previously stopped will continue to go if you try and stop another one. Another mess. <laughs> I can imagine being this uh, this chef having to like grab these pastries off of one conveyor belt, put it onto another conveyor belt, run to another conveyor belt. I mean, with with um, pressure cooker, you're doing something similar where you're grabbing a food item and throwing it into another area. Ooh, that was close. I'm gonna stop you. Grab you and you. Whoops, whoops, whoops. I almost didn't make that one. Uh, but with pressure cooker, you're actually like performing a, a recipe essentially. So you have to know which ones to grab and where to take it. Whoops, whoops. Oh. Uh, but this is just straight on. It's just coming at you and you just gotta move your butt. You almost have to think two turns ahead or two. Two cakes ahead, I should say. Like, I'm not gonna make that cake, so I'm gonna have to freeze it and then <laughs> go back and. and I, I'm just not cut out for these types of games. I still haven't seen any fork or anything, but supposedly some kind of fork and knife thing are supposed to come out. Oh, there's the coffee break. That's just to give you a few seconds. Oh, there we go. Okay, so we got one now. So I'm going to freeze that. I don't know why I free froze that one, but... You have to... Oh! You have to avoid those. You don't want to touch them. So I think I'm going to get this one first, and then I'm going to get that. So those are kind of like obstacles. You don't want to touch those the, the, the forks. Come, come back to you guys. See, I, I was able to uh, kickstart that one back into gear because I didn't want to miss... Oh, I shouldn't have done that. Because I stopped it and then I restarted it so I can go and grab it before the time ran out. I can see this being a game too where after you've played several games you start to get the knack of it. You start to realize, okay, I need to be there, I need to be there. <laughs> kind of like in real life. I mean, if, if this was actually happening where cakes were coming off conveyor belts and you were able to see when, you know, that cake was going to hit, you know. Uh, so I'm going to have to do, oh no. I like the simplicity of this though. I mean, a lot of games that are very simple can, can kind of be not so challenging. Uh, but this is definitely, you really need to be on the ball on this one. Like, look at this. There's like, every conveyor belt now has a cake on it. And they're moving at different speeds, which, oh, there's a gingerbread man. Okay. Oh no! One little loss of concentration. This is a little bit different than, say, with, with something like Kaboom. Where, in Kaboom, the speed is what changes. The, the speed of the bomber dropping the bombs. Whereas in this, the complexity of, of the amount of cakes that you need to uh, go
go to and you can't miss one. Like, you just can't miss it. And you don't have a whole lot of reaction time to get back there. I, I think that means it's over. Yeah. <laughs> but, I mean, this game is, is I mean, it's pretty decent. It, it's kind of a shame that it was, you know, one of those games that was made by a company that... Uh, I, I actually don't know the history of this company, but I'm sure there must have been a reason why their games are so rare. And I heard that they're not so rare overseas, like in South America or somewhere else. Um, but... I mean, that's just the way it was. I mean, the things were crazy back in, in the, uh, you know, the early 80s after the video game crash. Things changed all over the place. Companies were making games all over the place. We were expected to get stuff like this. Otherwise, it's actually a pretty decent game. So, you know, if you have an emulator or if you have a, a flash card or whatever that you can actually play this on, um, you know, give it a shot or try it on your computer or on your at games if you have the mobile. Um, give it a shot. It's actually a pretty decent game. Anyways, let me know what you think. Throw some comments down below. And if you have this game, let me know. I'm sure there's some really, uh, you know, high-tier collectors out there that have this game already. Uh, I always like to hear it. Hope you liked the video. Hope you subscribe. Talk to you later.